Hey, what's up? This is Chosen. Happy New Year. I hope you had a fun and safe New Year's Eve. And it is time to talk about Raid Shadow Legends 2022 year in review. Now that it is the first day of 2023, let's put a lid on 2022 and I've got some of the main things that came to mind uh, in terms of being new to Rage of the Legends last year in 2022. So I want to talk about these different mechanics and remind you about them and some of the context around them and then also rank them in terms of what was the best and what was the worst of 2022 in Rage of the Legends. Let's get into it. Alrighty, now right out the gate, uh, I, I do want to say I did my best uh, to go through like all my videos for the year and and really try to find um, all of the stuff that uh, was added and then and try to figure out what what were the ones that were worth talking about uh, and would be fun in the context of a video. So if I missed anything on here, definitely feel free to let me know down below. But I did my best to uh, to try and, and take some time to go through. But admittedly, I'm not perfect, so if I miss something, I apologize. This is the stuff that came to my mind in 2022 uh, that we're gonna go ahead and talk about. So I'll just go from left to right and we'll go uh we'll go in order and we'll talk about it so this isn't necessarily in chronological order uh in terms of when it was added to the game or anything it looks like it's going in alphabetical order because you can see like blessing right here uh is towards the start of the alphabet so we're gonna start with blessings um you know, I, I might just uh, get stuff on the board here quick and then we'll talk at the end uh when I kind of rank everything but uh blessings you know, um, I, I think are a pretty solid addition to the game. I, I don't think people uh, are big fans of spending a lot of money on Blessings, but uh, they are kind of fun to play with, and they do help with PvE content uh, to put together successful teams. So, make, you know, I, I kind of want to go in the A tier for now on Blessings. Not perfect. I'm not going to go S. I think there's definitely, um, there should be some more variety, and it should be a little bit more realistic to get the, uh, the, the Soul Stones and stuff. Uh, uh, but we'll start in A with Blessings. Then this next uh, icon here is Fusions. So Fusion Events. There was definitely some really, really cool ones. Um, I believe Helicath was in 2022. Nishak. Uh, you know, they had some fun Fusions. Mighty Uko. I'd go like I'd go like high B or low A. I think the fusions, uh, you know, it, they could have been a little bit better, but I do think we did get some good options in there uh, in terms of fusion events in 22. Then next, this icon here represents the guaranteed summon events. Now, uh, guaranteed summon events for 2022. Let's grab the pen. Where did we start? Uh, it looks like we started kind of right here. God Seeker is a good one to kick the year off uh, for sure. And then we ended kind of right here. Okay, so lots of these uh, guaranteed summon events over the course of the year. I mean, it looks like some really good champions. Uh, God Seeker, Wither, Archbishop, uh, Kyoku, Riho, Sishia, Canterfon, Ragash, Nekmathar, uh, Elva, it was like Staltus. So some really, really good guaranteed summon events. Now, I don't know if I can go S because some of them were a little bit pricey and I don't like the inflation kind of coming up here recently. Um, if there wasn't inflation on those, I probably would have gone S in all honesty. They, I think they were uh, some pretty hype events for some new champions and some, and some good champions to add to your account. But I'm going to start in A just because we're starting to get a little bit worried about some of the inflation. Then for Iron Twins, um, I mean, I'm mostly neutral on it. Uh, you know, it, it is what it is. It, it's new content. Um, I, I guess, uh, yeah, I, I'm not overly positive or overly negative on Iron Twins. It's just kind of like, okay, it's new content to the game, so we're going to put it in B. And oh my goodness, the Crisk icon, uh, the Crisk craziness, the uh, definitely sticks out in things that happened in 2022 was the Crisk uh, champion training event where everybody was going psycho crazy uh, trying to get Crisk. I ended up bowing out because there was somebody going bananas in my group, uh, but I know some people uh, like like Hell Hades uh, went in and, and went after it hardcore crazy. Probably the hardest he ever grinded raid was to get Crisk, and it actually reminds me, I think the last time I had Hell Hades on the channel here for a collab was asking him about uh, his perspective after winning the Crisk event. So uh, I need to be better in 2023 about making sure I remember to kind of collab with everybody. It ends up being a while since I had like Ash on the channel until recently. And since like the Crisk event, I haven't had Hades on. Uh, lots of people that I still need to get to uh, that I haven't had on the channel before. So it kind of reminds me I need to be better about that as a New Year's resolution and, and, and kind of getting around the community more often and more effectively. But you know, the Crisk event, um, um, 
yeah, you know, it's going to end up being like low B. I, like it is what it is. Uh, again, it's kind of neutral. I, I'm not overly negative or overly positive on it. Um, I, I, think, I, I think the argument kind of goes in either direction. I would lean towards like low B. Oh boy, and then we've got the oils, the gear ascension. Um, you know, this might be my first thing I put in C. I don't know if I'm necessarily going to go F because it is a net positive to the game. And I do think long term, it could end up being a good thing. Uh, but I would have personally definitely implemented it differently and and done some things different with it. Uh, I, think, I think the Ascension thing could have been like high A or low S uh, if it was done in a, in, in a better way. Um, but we're going to start with C tier right now. Chaos or, um, you know, again, this is, this is kind of meh. Um, like, I think it's a net positive. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but it just ends up not really having the impact that I kind of thought it would. So it's, it's going to start in B tier right now. And once we get everything on the board, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll mix and match and we'll kind of give some context here to wrap up the year. And then we may be getting our first S tier, the reserve vault. Great. They, they added a, actually, actually hold up here. Hold up. It was pricey. I, you know, I, I kind of forgot that it cost resources to get the reserve vault. Uh, I was going to just slot it right into S, but I got to remember it, it was pretty pricey. So I'm going to, because of that, I'm going to drop it down to the back of A. I do really like that it was added to the game. If it would have been something they just like gave to the player base as a quality of life account management kind of thing, boom, instant S. But I do need to drop it a little bit because I wish it would have been uh, a little bit cheaper to acquire. Then we have something really recent, the Ronda event. You know, I might go S. I think I think Ronda is a really cool champion, and uh, I think it was a fun partnership, like, uh, you know, the ads and all that, and uh, in terms of trying to bring new people, introduce Raid Shadow Legends to a new community of people, uh, your, your people that are into mixed martial arts and fighting and stuff like that, maybe that's not, like, your typical Gasha mobile gamer, so I do think it was a smart choice uh, from a business perspective uh, to, to reach new players, and a, a pretty cool champion in-game that, that has some utility and can really do some fun things. So uh, in terms of being a free login promotion, yeah, I, I think pretty solid. I don't have any negative qualms with it. So we might have to put that one in the S tier. Oh, geez, the Sand Devils Necropolis. Is this going to go in the F tier? You know, it, it's a new dungeon and it's based around sleep. Um... <laughs> Um, gosh, but it only pertains to such a small percentage, like five percentage of the player base that can grind it effectively, maybe 10%. Um, and it costs too much energy and you kind of have to, you can't even like play it standard. You kind of have to like cheese it. Gosh, I might go F tier. Th this might be a hot take and some of you might disagree with me, but I might go F tier on Sand Devil. It's a cool dungeon. It's a, it's a cool aesthetic and it's a really cool boss. Um, but yeah, I would have definitely liked to see this be a lot different. So, uh, the oil and the sand, uh, necropolis, uh, and the, and, and the whole thing surrounding kind of the gear ascension. Um, although it is a net positive, I, I do view these things as kind of low in the overall scheme of things. We also got the Shadowkin faction crypt. Uh, and you know, I, I mean, it was kind of is what it is. I, I think this was fine. Uh, I think the Shadowkin is, uh, is, is a cool faction and they, they've got some interesting champions and, uh, I don't really have any negative, uh, sentiment towards it. So I think it's like, it, it's like high A, low S. It's been a really good addition to the game. I could almost, uh, put this in the S tier. I, th I think the Shadowkin, uh, has been really good so far. I'd maybe, uh, do I have anything negative to say about Shadowkin? I feel like they could have maybe, I, I'm going to go A. It's not awesome, um, but uh, but definitely a uh, really, uh, really big fan of Shadowkin as a faction being added to the game and the Crypt going live this year. And then the Saris skin here represents skins coming to the game. Um, like, obviously, this would be instant S. This would be just amazing. Like, uh, you know, uh, Raid has such an amazing environment and aesthetic and look to it. Uh, it's really got something to offer that no other game like it does. So this would be instant S. I think they're a little bit overpriced. And I think they're, they're not, like, in the game as often as they should be to acquire them. So because of that, I'm going to drop it down into A. But, uh, but the skins are definitely a really cool and overall positive addition to the game for sure. We also got these Sylvan Watchers added to the game. And, um, you know, I, I'm i going to go, like, 
I'm gonna go like high B. I'd like to see uh, a, a little bit more life to this faction. Um, the, the the Void Legendary Ileal is, is a little bit underwhelming in terms of being you know that Void Lego that really kicks off the the faction. Um, but other than that, they do have some cool champions. There's not there maybe should be a couple more. There might not be enough champions um, as of yet, and we're gonna have to wait a while for the for the faction crypt. So it is cool, uh, and and I think it's gonna be an awesome addition to the game. Um, but I'm mostly neutral on it for some of those reasons. Ultimate Death Knight, the good old the UDK. This is instant S. This is this is this is this was one of the most fun things of 2022. Uh, you know, if we are going to rightfully so uh, criticize Plarium when they make mistakes or when they do things wrong, we should also give credit when they do something fun and 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 cool and interact with the community. And everything around the Ultimate Death Knight event was really really cool. He's a he's an interesting champion that is fun and brings some life. Uh, his character has has fun animations and, and a pet rat, and he fit it, and he fits in kind of cool with the lore of the game. Uh, and they had some fun ads around it. They did lots of promotions with all the different you know well I shouldn't say all but many different content creators in raids. So they brought a lot of people uh, on board and, and promoted them in game and stuff and interacted with the community. As I'm sure you're well aware of, the investment market out there is very volatile. Do you have any insight as to what your strategy is going to be as you come into new finances here, uh, being one of the elite champions in Teleria? Are you going to be buying the dip, bailing out while you still can, or Diamond Hand holding strong with what you currently have? Diamond Hands are out. Bone Hands are in, baby. You see, I've been talking to my manager and he's telling me the best investment you can make is in yourself. And then he was a free champion for a Logan Award promo. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I can't imagine them doing a, a promotional new champion uh, much better to, to uh, than, than the Ultimate Death Knight was. In terms of being fun and accessible and involving the community, really, really well done on the Ultimate Death Knight promo. I thought that was a lot of fun. <laughs> and oh my goodness. The board, the board. Oh my! So this is the Halloween board. <laughs> the Halloween board. Don't ever forget the Halloween board. Okay, so uh, I guess for me personally, maybe you liked it, uh, but like I didn't even get to use the board. Like, like I went to spin the board and it didn't even work. It it, it was like you don't qualify or your spin has already been used or something. And I was like, wait, what? Like we agree, and let's see what we get. Um, you can only spin the wheel once. Okay, cool. Let's uh, do it. Wait, what? What? What's going on here? I never, I never got to spin the wheel. I never even got to spin the wheel. It's saying I already did with my, uh, with my ID. Um. Okay, great. So I didn't even get to roll the board. Uh, you know. I get what their what their head was at trying to do something fun for Halloween, but uh, the the board was 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 one of the memes of 2022 for sure. So uh, yeah, for those of you that remember the board back in Halloween, uh, good luck if you got anything from it. I'm happy for you because I didn't even get to roll mine. So now, is there anything I want to change? Um, I'd probably slide the reserve vault up because it really doesn't harm you. I mean, even if you can't afford it. Uh, like I might go, I might go S on the reserve vault because even if you can't afford it, at least it's still there as an option at some point. Uh, and just having more storage can't be a bad thing. If it was free, obviously it'd be like up here. Um, it, it, and I want to kind of try to even the tears out a little bit. You know, Chaos Ore, I, I think, should be in the game more. Like, I, I, there should be more opportunities to get this. Like, uh, I barely ever use my Chaos Ore, and you see, I have like two six-star epic ones. Like, they're like. It, it, it's, it would be a good addition to the game. It just needs to be more accessible uh, to, to be able to have fun using it more often. Um, blessing, da, 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 fusions, kind of neutral on this stuff here. Yeah, I feel pretty good about this. Uh, I feel pretty good about this in, in trying to uh, look over 2022 uh, and some of the things that were most notable and stood out to me. So uh, definitely let me know where you agree and where you disagree as we have a fun look back at 2022 and some of the stuff that happened here in game. And, and feel free to talk about down below uh, so some things that I missed or some things you wish I would have talked about and all that. I uh, am going to try to be better in 2023 about featuring the community more and especially uh, channel members that leave interesting comments and stuff. I want to pull those up in videos and do a better job interacting with all of you. So uh, anyway, cheers. Have a great rest of your New Year's Day, and I will see you soon in the next video. Remember to subscribe on your way out if you enjoy daily Rage Shadow Legends content. Thanks for watching. Peace.